Well, hello, everyone. Um, uh, this is uh, John Klute, K7SYS, and I'm your amateur radio moderator for today's ARIS, Amateur Radio on the International Space Station Contact. I'm speaking to you from my home in Sandpoint, Idaho, which what makes this contact a little different from the usual ARIS contact is that everyone involved in this contact will be speaking to you from their home as we work all work with COVID-19 restrictions. Through the help of amateur radio volunteers and the crew of the ISS, we all hope to soon establish an amateur radio contact with the International Space Station as it flies more than 200 miles above the Earth over Australia. The contact will be formed using the Amateur Radio Telebridge Network, a worldwide network of amateur radio ground station that enables students to contact the ISS. We are joined today by Dan Vassen, the principal of uh, the um, Oregon Charter Academy, as well as Dave Jordan, AA4KN, the Aeros technical moderator who helps set up this call. Dan, please tell us a little bit about the Oregon Charter Academy. Oregon Charter Academy strives to create a self and welcoming environment for all 4,700 plus students we serve. We focus our work on individually engaging all students with the goal of academic success. The mission of our school is to prepare all students for success in a global society through an inclusive, rigorous academic environment where students have daily live interaction with highly qualified teachers and continuous access to curriculum. The academy staff partners with families in a transparent, collaborative school environment to support all students in their academic journey. Our school is currently providing high school students with authentic career and technical education opportunities through ASCEND, a career and technical education program. Oregon Charter Academy seeks to expand the number of partnerships with industry professionals, enhancing our students' learning experiences. Hosting this ARIS contact is helping us achieve that goal, and it serves a focal point from which additional course content enrichment opportunities are being provided. We are very excited to serve as the lead host organization for this ARIS contact. As a virtual school with a statewide reach, this opportunity provides our community with a significant, relevant, and timely showcase event being used to increase students' awareness of and interest in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics-related careers. One of our school's educational objectives is to increase the opportunities for students to participate in industry-led training and internships related to careers in STEM fields. The goal of providing these opportunities is to expand the number of students graduating from our school with STEM-related workforce skills. Hosting this ARIS contact provides our students with an authentic experience directly supporting these goals. Special thanks to James Loftus of the J. Philip Loftus Jr. Mobile Museum for supporting Oregon Charter Academy's existing STEM related science content delivery options via the remote and distance interactive online sessions program in which Oregon Charter Academy is a participating school. We also want to extend thanks to Jay Hennigan, retired network engineer, who first brought this ARIS opportunity to our attention and who has served as our technical advisor over the past year of this event was being logistically planned and then adapted under the circumstances. I'm grateful our school encourages this type of STEM integration and that we have the facility and technical capacity to accomplish this event remotely. I want to extend my gratitude to the 25 members of our school's NASA ARIS Experience Committee that helped to offer our ARIS application, develop the curriculum integrations, co-host our radios from Space Center Houston, and select the questions and panelists who will be interviewing Shannon Walker in a little bit. Finally, I would like to thank my parents who encouraged me to pursue my interest in science and astronomy as a child, taking me to science museums, planetarium shows, and the Griffith Park Observatory in Los Angeles, California, to look through telescopes at the stars and planets. Nurturing my curiosity and fascination as a youth resulted in my pursuit of a career in science, then science education, and now school leadership so we can provide similar experiences for our students. Jason, thanks for uh, sharing something with, with us about your students and about the, uh, about the school. ARIS is an international program supported by amateur radios from around the world. Some members, organizations of ARIS are the American Radio Relay League, the Worldwide AMSAT Radio Amateur Satellite Corporation, as well as space agencies, including the Canadian Space Agency, the European Space Agency, the Japanese Space Agency, the National Aeronautics and Science Administration, and the Russian Space Agency. 
The amateur radio ground station that will establish contact with the ISS is VK4KHZ, located in Glendon, Queensland, Australia, and operated by Shane Lynn. Shane, please tell us a little bit about your station and how you will handle today's contact. Thank you, John. Uh, it's a pleasure being with your, uh, your group today. Well, uh, VK4KHZ, my station, is located in the small semi-remote mining community of Glendon which is around 200 kilometres inland from the city of Mackay and it, uh, it's situated just on the edge of the outback Australia. So we're in central Queensland and um, my station is located or is situated at an elevation of around 400 metres above sea level so it lends itself quite well to this type of activity. The town that we live in is only a uh, fairly small population, about 428 people. So it is a relatively small town in comparison to, uh, to some of the neighbouring towns and, uh, and the local city being Mackay. The equipment that we'll be using here today for the technical people, we're using two Yaesu FT847s, one as a primary and one as a secondary station. The antennas, the main tracking antennas are six element by six element crossed Yagis and we have the ability to switch between circular and linear polarisation with those antennas and those antennas will actually track the station as it moves across the sky in order to, uh, to maintain a good strong signal. Now once we establish contact with the International Space Station, so I'll call several times until such time as we get a response, once we've got a good clear signal, I'll simply say to the first person that's asking the question being Ian, Ian, please go ahead with your first question. When Ian's completed his question, um, the next student should be standing by and I'll simply say, please go ahead, Riley, with your question, which will be the next uh, participant. Okay, um, so I think that's probably probably about it from my side. Back over to you, John. Uh, thanks very much, Shane. We have about a little less than 12 minutes until contact time. Our contact today is with astronaut Shannon Walker, KD5KXB, who will be using the ISS call sign NA1SS. The American Radio Relay, Re Relay League has provided us with a short video that tells us a little bit more about the Eris contact and how it will happen. Let's watch that video now. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ruth. And my name is Chris. You must be pretty excited to talk directly with astronauts on the International Space Station today. While we're waiting for the space station to come over your portion of the sky, let's talk a little bit about how it's going to happen. Of course, Mission Control is in contact with astronauts all the time, using a big radio with lots of fancy equipment. However, we're going to be using something very different today. We are going to use ham or amateur radio to talk directly to the International Space Station. When most people hear the word radio, they think of a music radio station. But it's so much more than that. Radio actually refers to the unseen energy that transmits all sorts of signals using electromagnetic waves. At first, people learn how to send signals like Morse code. And then they discover that you can send so much more, like data, computer signals, and even TV. Maybe you don't realize it, but you use radio every day. Maybe you watched the TV this morning, or you texted your friends, or maybe even you check social media like Twitter or Instagram. Let's travel back to space for a minute. Since the beginning of the space age, humans have sent many spacecraft out into the universe. These range from the Hubble Space Telescope orbiting the Earth daily and the Curiosity rover exploring Mars. We've even sent a long distance messenger, the Voyager 1, who has traveled outside of our solar system. Whether it's capturing a great picture of a far off galaxy or conducting experiments on the space station, radio has to do with all of these. And today, you're gonna to be using ham radio. Now you might be wondering, what exactly is ham radio? Amateur or ham radio is a service and a hobby where operators can talk with people around their neighborhoods, their cities, their country, and even around the world. Amateur radio operators require a radio license from the government. They're not that hard to get. I have one. My call sign is KM4LAO. And mine is KD8YBJ. 
Our call signs are a way of identifying who we are to other operators. This lets everyone know that we have the proper license to using the radios. As amateur radio operators, or hands as we are often called, we can talk with others about basically whatever we want, often science or some new radio gadget that we are interested in. Let's focus back to the space station and your contact today. Many of the astronauts and cosmonauts aboard the space station are licensed ham radio operators. That's why your operators today can contact them. The people here, as well as the astronauts, are licensed to talk to each other, and you are allowed to talk over to their radio. For our conversation today, we'll need an amateur radio station on the ground, either in this location or somewhere else around the world. We'll also need a radio in the space station. You can hear the calls coming. This is November Alpha 1 Sierra Sierra, the International Space Station, over. On the space station, the radio transceiver is connected to an amateur radio antenna mounted on the outside. One of these antennas will be used today during our contact. For our side of the contact, we need a good-sized antenna, a signal amplifier, something to make our signal stronger, and a rotator for turning our antenna. We have to keep our antenna pointed right at the International Space Station. And remember, it's moving across the sky and fast. To aim the antenna properly, we need to track the path of the space station exactly. NASA uses complex systems to track the path of the space station and other orbiting objects. The satellite tracking program we are using works out a complicated set of mathematics to provide the orbital location of the space station moment by moment as it moves through space. This information is sent to the computer that controls the antenna rotator, which moves the antenna to follow the space station. Maybe some of you have seen or worked with robotics. That's pretty cool stuff. And just like you can program a robot where to go, what to do, and how to get there, you can also program a computer to tell an antenna how to track the space station across the sky. You know, it took a lot of planning to get this contact. Several weeks ago, the ARIS operations team had to figure out when the space station's orbit would pass over this location. Then, they had to talk with the planners at NASA's Johnson Space Center. The crew's time is pretty full, so they were able to find a time that could work for the crew members' schedules. Once they found times that would work both in space and here on the ground, the host organized this contact. And in just a few minutes, you'll be hearing and talking to the astronauts. Well, it's almost time for your contact. It will be exciting, so good luck with it. Thank you for, uh, thanks to the ARL for that video that explains what the contact looks like from the ground side. We have a short video that was produced by the European Space Agency with astronaut Tim Peake, KG5 BVI, that'll show us what the contact looks like from the ISS side. Uh, you wanna go ahead and run that video, please. Hi everyone, I'm Tim Peake and welcome aboard the International Space Station, where we're orbiting Earth 16 times every day. One of the most rewarding activities that some astronauts undertake on orbit is to talk to schools using the space station's ham radio. Now these are events that are planned by ARIS, which is a worldwide group of amateur radio volunteers who are dedicated to introducing young people and students to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Now this is the equipment here in the Columbus Laboratory, which consists of a handheld radio, a headset, and we also have a ham video unit. Now as the International Space Station orbits above your location, a radio link is established between the ISS and your school. Now, because we're traveling at nearly 18,000 miles per hour, which is an incredible 25 times the speed of sound, we usually get about nine or 10 minutes of good radio contact before losing the signal. So about five minutes before the scheduled start time of the contact, I come into the Columbus Laboratory and configure the radio so that I'm on the correct channel. And sometimes I'll set up a ham video too. Just before the predicted time, I begin to start calling the school using the standard amateur radio calling techniques. 
For example, if the call sign of your school was GB4 Fun, I would say Golf Bravo 4, Foxtrot Uniform November. This is Golf Bravo 1 Sierra Sierra, listening and standing by. Now at your school, the radio operator will be listening for my call, but may also transmit and try to call me as well. You'll probably have a much more powerful transmitter on the ground than we have up here on board. So I'm likely to hear you before you hear me. Then, once we can hear each other, then comes the best bit, which is actually talking to the students and answering the questions. Once I've answered all the questions, we use the remaining time to say goodbye to each other and end the connection. I'll then spend a few minutes configuring the radio back into a rebroadcast mode, and then I'll go back to my day job, which is, of course, doing science on board the International Space Station. ARIS is a brilliant opportunity for astronauts to talk to school pupils. It's really rewarding to hear how excited the students are when they're talking to somebody up here in space. And it's a true privilege to be able to inspire our next generation of scientists and engineers through amateur radio. Well, now we've seen what the contact looks like, both from the Earth side and from the ISS side. The International Space Station is about uh, two minutes away uh, from uh, Shane's location. Uh, our indications are it might have come a little earlier than we had originally expected. So what I'm going to do is turn it over to Shane. As uh, we heard astronaut uh, Tim Peake say, we only have about uh, nine or 10 minutes of contact time and we'd rather be a little bit early than a little bit late. So Shane, I'm gonna turn it over to you at this point. Okay, thank you, uh, John. Yeah, we've got um, around two minutes or so to go before we have, uh, have contact time. Um, the antennas are just about to track into position now. Uh, where are we? There we go. So the antennas now are actually moving into position in order to uh, lock onto the space station as it comes up over the horizon. So it's really important that everybody uh, gets in their positions now. Uh, we have uh, just a little over one minute. So in about 30 seconds time, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna start calling. Don't be too concerned if we don't get a response immediately. And I'll keep calling until such time as uh, we get a response from the astronaut. Now in just a moment, I'm going to open the mute of the radio. So you'll hear some, what we refer to as white noise. And then once we've established contact and we've got a nice strong signal, we'll mute that slightly. So just stand by. seconds before acquisition of signal. So in about 20 seconds time, I'm going to start calling. So stand by everyone. Calling NA1SS, NA1SS, NA1SS. This is Victor Kilo, 4 Kilo Hotel Zulu, VK4KHZ calling for a scheduled contact. Can you receive, over. NA1SS, NA1SS, NA1SS. This is Victor Kilo, 4 Kilo Hotel Zulu, VK4KHZ calling for a scheduled contact. Can you receive? Over. Uh, good morning to you there, Shannon. Uh, Shannon, we're only just starting to come up over the horizon now. Uh, Shannon, we have uh, the students from Oregon Charter Academy standing by for you. Can you receive me? Over. Yes, I can receive you. Do you receive me? NA1SS. I'm ready for the students. Oh. Okay, thanks, Shannon. Okay, Ian, please go ahead with your first question. Go ahead, Ian. This is Ian. Go ahead, Ian. Number. This is Ian. Go ahead with your first question, Ian, please. <laughs> Hi. Hi. This is Ian. Go ahead with your question, please, Ian. space over. Uh, 
Uh, did you receive that out, uh, Shannon? Over. Over. NA1SS, NA1SS, VK4 KAZ. <laughs> NA1SS, NA1SS, this is VK4 KHZ on the primary frequency. NA1SS, I'm on the primary frequency. Over, do you read me? Over. Read you loud and clear, Shannon. Please go ahead, Ian, with your first question. Hi, this is me. Hi, this is on the space station. I just sleep on the space station. Over. Over. Excellent question. I sleep in a sleeping bag while I'm floating in a sleeping bag that's attached to the side of the space station. Over. Go ahead, Riley, with your next question. Hi, my name is Riley. Do compasses work in space? Over. Riley, fantastic question. The answer is it's complicated. In the space station around the Earth, I think the compasses would work. They work based on the magnetic field of the Earth. If you went to another planet, say Venus or Mars, where there's no measurable magnetic field, compasses will not work. Over. Go ahead, Nora, with your question. Hi, Go this ahead, is Nora. Laura. With... Can you look at the spaceship that is the same on Earth? Over. Nora, the only way we can listen to a radio station is if they send it up over um, the internet. Over. Go ahead, Sayed, with your next question. Hi, my name is Sayed, and my question is, how many satellites are there in space? Over. Sayed, I wish I knew how many satellites there are in space. I would say hundreds, if not thousands. Over. Go ahead, Kahelia, with your question. Hi, this is Kalia. My question is, do you see storms in outer space, and what do they look like? Over. Kalia, I see storms when I look down on Earth, and they look like storms like you would see on Earth. I would have to say that there's an amazing amount of lightning over Central Africa every day. Over. Go ahead, Emma, with your question. Hi, this is Emma. My question is, what's your favorite activity you had to do during training? Over. Emma, training to go on the ISS is a lot like being in school. We have a lot of classroom work and we do uh, simulations and simulators. I would say my favorite activity that I had to do would be ham radio training. Over. Go ahead, Will, with your question. This is Will. Are you currently growing any plants on the ISS? Over. Well, we are. We are currently growing some radishes on the ISS. Over. Go ahead, Delaney, with your question. This is Delaney, and does it take a while to get used to the new way of living, and is adjusting to being back on Earth equally hard? Over. Delaney, very good question. It does take a while to get used to living in zero gravity. You're constantly losing things because they float away. Coming back to Earth is hard in a different way because your body is not used to the gravity, and it really hurts for a long time. Over. Go ahead, Grace, with your question. Hey, this is Grace. How is your circadian rhythm affected while in space? Over. Grace, you know, day to day, it's about the same. I would say the hardest part about going to space is jet lag because we uh, go into a different time zone on the space station. Over. Go ahead, Elena, with your question. Hi, this is Elena. What is your favorite thing to research? Over. Elena, I think my favorite thing is the research done on the human body in space. I find it very interesting. Over. Go ahead, Caleb, with your question. Hi, this is Caleb, and my question is, are you allowed to have pets in space? And if so, what kinds? Over. Caleb, we're not allowed to have pets in space. I can't imagine trying to take care of a pet up here. Um, just feeding it would be an incredible uh, production. Over. Go ahead, Ezekiel. Hi, this is Ezekiel. Did you ever accidentally activate or deactivate something by bumping into it? Over. Ezekiel, I'd like to say that I'm perfect, but I would have to say I probably have uh, activated or deactivated something accidentally. Usually it's because I am throwing the wrong switch. Over. 
Go ahead, Ian, with your question. This is Ian. This is Ian. Do you watch TV in this place? Okay. You watch TV and the PlayStation over. Ian, I do watch TV in space, but it's not live TV. They record the TV shows on the ground and they send them up to me and then I watch TV while I'm exercising. Over. Go ahead, Riley. Uh. This is Riley. How do you use electronics, phones, computers, and tablets and touch screens? Over. Riley, we don't actually have tele our phones up here. We use computers to talk to the space station. We use tablets and touch screens to uh, have our procedures that we use to operate all our experiments up here. Over. Go ahead, Nora, with your question. Hi, this is Nora. How do you communicate with people? Nora, I have got the ham radio, of course. We've got email up here, and I can use... Um, the telephone through the internet to call my family. Over. Go ahead, Syed, with your question. Hi, my name is Syed, and my question is, how do satellite communications work? Over. Syed, I think you're going to be an engineer one day. Satellite communications work by sending information through um, either the atmosphere or through space to another satellite or to stations on the ground. And then that information is sent to where it needs to go. Over. Uh, go ahead, Kalia, with your question. Hi, this is Kalia. And how does it long, how long does it take to get to the International Space Station? Over. Kalia, it depends on how things are when you launch. It takes eight and a half minutes to get into space, and it takes about a day or two days to catch up to the space station before you can dock with it. Over. Go ahead, Emma, with your question. What's the most dangerous situation you've ever faced in space? Over. Emma, I think it was standing in the way of dinner for one of my crewmates. Over. Uh, go ahead, Delaney, with your question. This is Delaney, and what happens if your technology goes out? What's the backup? Over. Excellent question. So we have electronic procedures up here, and we've got backup copies on lots and lots of different computers. So hopefully we won't lose all our computers at once. Over. Uh, go ahead, Grace, with your question. Go ahead, Grace. Hi, this is Grace. Uh, how long is the delay for a video call? Okay, Grace, the delay is not actually very long. It's only a couple of seconds. Over. Okay, Shannon, this uh, concludes our list of prepared questions. Please stand by one moment. Um, the group would like to say a group goodbye to you. Um, okay, everyone, please, uh, a goodbye to Shannon, and thanks very much. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you so very much. I enjoy talking to you. Over. Enjoy talking okay, thanks, Shannon. Over. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Shannon. That's a pleasure. A pleasure. Uh, seven threes. This is uh, Victor Kilo for Kilo Hotel Zulu. Now closing the link. Uh, seven threes from uh, Australia and from the US. Well, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, Victor Kilo for Kilo Hotel Zulu. It's a pleasure to talk to Oz. Over and out. Very good. Well, thank you. Thank you to uh, Shannon and thank you to Shane and thank you to all the uh, students on our panel who ask all these questions. We've all just been part of a distant learning activity uh, featuring students of the Oregon Charter Academy speaking with astronaut Shannon Walker on the International Space Station. On behalf of the international volunteer team of ARIS, including the amateur radio satellite corporations around the world, the amateur radio league station and the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, all the other space agencies, this is John, amateur radio operator K7SYS, sending you greetings from all to all of you in traditional amateur radio terms. 73's best wishes.